What's one single activity that an, in, an agent can do over the next several months that you believe will drastically impact the amount of income that they earn? So I, I would say that it's just talking to prospects. I mean, that sounds so cheesy, but it's yeah. hard to get around that core principle. And it doesn't even always mean new leads. If you, let's say that you've had some pretty good success, let's just say in final expense or selling Medicare supplements, and you've got, I don't care if it's modest, you know, 50 or 75 customers on the books, you, you know, I challenge you in the midst of your week as you're booking new appointments to engage with those current customers, because that's really going to open doors. It's going to further establish your relationship. And especially if you do Medicare, people love to refer in Medicare particularly. So just constantly, if you have a down day, maybe your lead flow was delayed or maybe you, know, you had something come up, every single day be talking to prospects and that can even mean your current customer base. So if you've got a few hours of downtime, pull out that CRM or pull out your Excel spreadsheet and just call Betty and call Joe and just ask them how everything's going. It's AAP, it's gonna open doors for you. The more people you talk to, should be the funnest part of the business too. If you if you enjoy this business, talking to people is what's going to continue to help you grow. So, yeah. so, so your your go to is Betty for 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 you as well. Yeah, yeah. Is that yours too, dude? Yeah. My my team. It, it's so much that my team made T shirts to say "Hello, Betty." <laughs> <laughs> Mine was <doing> so. <laughs> That's good. Uh, what 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 do you think it is for you, Ethan? As far as that big activity, man. Close yourself. Just like Kenny said, I mean, we're, we're both big on that. I, I can still to this day remember that very first door that I knocked on. I mean, I'm sitting there just shaking like this. And I, I, in fact, I think they even booted me out. I'm not sure I even made it there 30 seconds. Um, but the only way to get better and to make sales is to continue knocking on those doors or continue booking those appointments uh, and just getting that activity level up higher. At our last organization, it was, uh, I think it was book 18 appointments a week to see 10. That was the goal. Um, and and we, we, still, follow we, we that. still follow that. We do not get away from that. We see at a minimum 10 people a week. Um, now, what's going to happen is you're going to still be able to see 10 people. Uh, I don't think you're necessarily going to be able to see more and more, but your closing rate is going to go higher and higher. Okay, yeah. so That's what we do. We still see the exact same number of people every single week. It's just our closing ratio has gotten a lot higher because we've gotten a lot more comfortable because we were exposed to a lot more people. That's good. I always teach the uh, set, sit, sell. And I, I remember my first year, I always sat with 10 every week, man. And it's amazing um, what happens when you get to that number consistency. Consistently, a lot of good things start to happen. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad you shared that. That makes a ton of sense. Um, all right. Last question. Um, before we get to how they can follow you guys and everything else, what, what's one thing, a moment, and I'm going to delay a little so you can think about this because I'm putting you on the spot. What's one moment that has you can look back over the 29 years of your existence and be like, that one moment really impacted my life. And I can I can look back on that moment and say, you know what? Something shifted in me that day and I am who I am because of that single moment. Hmm. So, I mean, this is just in life in general that necessarily have to directly relate to our insurance career or, or would you say? Yeah, yeah. It does not have to. No. Yeah. That's a tough question, too. So I'm. Uh... I, I think I've got mine. Mine's going to be a little cheesy, but I was in college. I had a pretty unique opportunity in college. I had this job that um, at the time I was just like, God, this thing is terrible. Um, but looking back, I had some pretty. uh, uh awesome mentors and i always talk about mentors and, and trying to get with the right people my boss was actually my, from that college job was actually my best man in my wedding and he you know he's really gone through uh the entire you know since i was 18 all the way up until now which there's been a lot of room for uh, growth and improvement uh but i was sitting down with him and his boss and i'm you know 19 years old don't care about this job don't care about the two guys i'm in front of I'm here to make my paycheck so I can go home and hit the next party, you know? And uh, I sat down with them and, um, and the, the boss was sitting there going, Ethan, I, you know, you're extremely frustrated uh, for a lot of people here. And I'm like, Oh, okay, well, that's nice. Good way to start. Um, and he goes, but I want it to be a compliment. And he goes, what that, what I mean by that is you're very influential. People listen to you when you talk 
and you just got to say the right things and you're always saying stupid stuff. So stop, maybe shift that mindset to know that pe every time you open your mouth, people are listening. And so what you need to do is shift that mindset, shift what you're saying into more uh, important and influential things. And you're going to be taken, you know, out of this world as far as, as being able to help people out. So I really took that and, and will try to take that and run with it. And I really didn't, I mean, I've been trying to implement it in all aspects of my life, but really with this whole YouTube thing and, and, and insurance thing, it's really taken off. People are listening to us and people want to know, uh, you know, why we're saying the things we're saying and how to do what we're saying and things like that. So really that, that little sentence and he, the guy that told me that probably doesn't even remember it. You know, what was his name? What was his name? Uh, Bill Leslie. And he wow. was in house last I heard. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's just that little thing that told that they told me, you know, 11 years ago, Ethan, say the right thing, shut up, you're influential, and 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 people will listen and want to and want to do what you say. How how many times have you ha, have you ever told that story on video? Never told anybody that video. Or Dude, this. that I got goosebumps listening to that. Like yeah. those are the moments that um, someone is is like molding and shifting and making you think different than because you probably didn't realize you were so influential with the way you spoke. Well, you're a natural salesperson. You said it. Well, that makes perfect sense now. But dude, I totally get that. Um, and the, you, you listen to super successful people. They had these people in their life previously, teachers, whatever, that like instilled that confidence in them and shared something with them. And 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 uh, man. Um, you know, I mean, Steve Harvey always tells a story. I love it. How he talks about how it, this was a negative impact that challenged him, but he had a teacher that made fun of him when he said he wanted to be a, um, uh, a TV host or comedian or whatever he said. And now, um, he shifts, he, he sends, he mails her a TV every year at Christmas. So that, <laughs> so that, so that, so that she may make sure he, he, she sees him on TV, uh, <laughs> And I'm like, I love that, man. That's good. You, you got to be, that's an origin story, by the way, that I'm not saying you got to share it on every video, mm -hmm. but when you get a chance to like speak or that, I'm telling you what you just said has to be in your story in some way, because it was really good. Powerful. I love that. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. It's good. I never heard that story. So that was good. Wow. Random. Random. Yeah. Yep. You're, you're pulling the, pulling the goods out from us. Good. Good, man. Guess it's early in the morning. Yeah, that's right. That's right. How about you, Kenny? Did you did you come up with one yet? Yeah, you know, I mean, mine's even cheesier, but it's the truth. I've got two young kids. I've got a, a, a little boy that's two and a half years old, and my daughter's a little over one. So my wife and I had them back to back. We weren't uh, with our first son. We did. We weren't expecting. We weren't trying. It happened. You know, God gave us that gift, I suppose. And uh, you know, I would just say, in the first few months of my son's life. I really learned that by no, I was forced to learn that if you live for other people and you put other people at the center of your life, instead of putting yourself at the center of your life, like I had done for 27 years prior to the day, you know, when my son was born, life gets a whole lot better, right? Like once you're more worried about people around you that you love and care about or encounter um, and, and you stop just being so self-centered, life becomes more beautiful. Whether you add money, don't add money, rough times, good times, you can weather all of that stuff once you put other people at the forefront of your life. So it's cheesy, but that's that's really been the pivotal moment in my life. So that's good, dude. That's what you guys are doing and living every single day. You know, um, it's strong. I mean, people. It can be easy, especially me. Like you know, and it sounds like Ethan and I are a ton alike. Um, I've struggled with some of that in the past and I, I get it, you know, like I get it. Um, but, but being able to realize that and put other people first when like, like when, before we shoot a video, we ask ourselves and I'm sure you guys do too. How can we help the person on the other end of the screen? And when you take that type of mentality and you think like that, um, it's a diff, it's, it's, it's a, it's not self serving. It's it's more about the, you know helping others, um, but you guys seem to seem to do that really really well, um, dude. Awesome freaking interview. You guys are you guys are phenomenal. Thank you for sharing all this stuff. Thank you for sharing some new stuff that you never shared, uh, which I try to do. I try to do. I try to get something out that it's never been shared before. Um, I got a whole page full of notes already. Uh, I'm writing like crazy. Um, how, how do 
people continue to plug in and follow you guys? Simple, but just go, our YouTube channel is just called Medicare Millennials. And uh, maybe we'll have a podcast out soon, but for now you can follow. Literally, Cody, you, you nailed it. We're just chronicling our journey to building a large, successful Medicare book of business. If you're interested in learning more about that, come join our journey and we'll be glad to be open and honest on what we're doing and share that with you. So that's that's the best way to, to reach us or follow us. We're not big social media guys, so you know, I get, we're lurkers on most but yeah, YouTube, we engage. So. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You guys are amazing. Uh, again, Kenny Layman's, Ethan Glidewell, Medicare Millennials. They just dropped the mic. Oh, there. Thanks for having us, man. Thanks. You got guys. it. Thank you, guys. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. If you had to look back over the last 13 years and you had to think of one aha moment that really maybe shifted things for you, right? Got your attention, made you change something, and, and, and it really 